gentlemen, welcome. We are, are so excited to see all of you here. A uh, special welcome to the uh, to the Gold Room, uh, a special place in the Capitol. The room is only for the, uh, the most important of visitors and, and dignitaries, and we're honored to have all of you here today, um, especially honored to have our friends who, uh, who have come to us uh, from Afghanistan. We, we hope you feel welcome, and uh, we're excited to give our media partners an update on, uh, on where we are. So since the, uh, the swift evacuation that happened in, uh, in, again in, in August of, of last year, a little more than 900 of the arrivals assigned to our state have now been resettled in Utah. This group includes individuals who work closely with and were critical allies to the U.S. government in Afghanistan. They're here with their families and their children to build a new life in, in this beautiful place. We are so grateful for the tireless work of our resettlement agencies, the IRC, the International Rescue Com uh, Committee, and Catholic Community Services. They have just been incredible partners to work with, and uh, we, we recognize their, um, the, j just their tireless efforts. We, um, we also want to uh, recognize the, uh, the Utah Refugee Services Offices office and the Refugee Advisory Board who have worked to, uh, to make connections and, uh, and to help with the, uh, the resettlement. Their leadership and dedication has made this resettlement possible. And I, I, I just I can't emphasize enough, I, this is the, the, the largest resettlement in our state's history. And uh, a after a period of time where we were having very few refugees come into our state, and so to, to put all of this together so quickly, uh, it, is, it, it, it's, it was breathtaking to watch, and uh, we're, we're grateful for everyone who, who made that happen. We, we're proud of the good work that they are continue, continuing to do. Um, we continue to work towards obtaining permanent housing for all of the newly arrived individuals and families. We recognize the challenges and are asking for help and support to secure the 50 uh, long-term housing units needed by the end of March. So we've done so well and people have been so generous, but we still need 50 um, of those units by the end of March. If you can help, uh, please send a message to refugeehousing at utah.gov. That's refugeehousing at utah.gov. Safe and secure housing is a critical need to create long-term success for, uh, for this group. Now, I, I also want to give an update, and thanks to the generosity of individuals and businesses in Utah, we achieved our goal to raise $1 million through the Utah Afghan Community Fund. Uh, I, I'm always amazed and never surprised at the generosity of Utahns. Scott Anderson of Zions Bank and Naja Lockwood of the Lockwood Family Foundation co-chaired that fund. I also want to recognize World Trade Center Utah and the Refugee Service Office for assisting in getting the fund organized. Money from the fund has already been used to provide necessary tools like cell phones and laptops as well as legal support for Afghan arrivals. And so we are now entering the next phase, uh, phase two of Afghan resettlement. With our new Afghan friends and neighbors here in Utah, our focus is shifting to education, training, and employment. We are helping families ensure they have what they need for their children to be successful in our schools and communities. We offer homework help and mentorships through the Utah Refugee Center. We would encourage you to consider donating your time to help these children and families. We're also helping new arrivals secure jobs and find training to set them up for a successful career and a very bright future. They arrived in Utah with permission to work and we're helping them find good jobs. We recognize the incredible talents, abilities, and life experiences that these Afghans bring to our labor force. They will be wonderful additions in, in filling much needed job vacancies in the state. And with the lowest unemployment in the country, we desperately need them. We are also using our nationally recognized resources at the Utah Refugee Center to provide training and education so Afghans can start on a new career path and support their family. These trainings include English language education and technology courses. Our hope for our Afghan friends and neighbors is the same as for all Utahns, to build a happy, fulfilling, successful life and for them to become active, engaged members of their communities. 
We are grateful for the legislature's willingness to take on issues impacting not only Afghan arrivals, but also refugees coming to the state. There are several bills that support refugees, but one in particular has a direct impact on Afghan arrivals to the state. HB 163 will help overcome a hurdle of new Afghan arrivals with obtaining their driver's license, which can impact their options for employment and general transportation needs. HB 163 is sponsored by Representative Carol Moss, who is with us today, Carol Spackman Moss, and Senator Kurt Bramble, um, who I don't think is with us today. Uh, uh, this bill specifies Afghan humanitarian parolees be included among groups eligible to use an interpreter when obtaining a driver's license. Because of the emergency circumstances resulting in these refugees coming to Utah, they were given the unique classification of humanitarian parole, which designation was not covered in previous legislation. Thus, HB 163 will expand this option to the Afghan refugees. If passed by the legislature, this bill goes into effect immediately with the governor's approval. Other bills of note that impact refugees include HB 130. The, this bill requires the driver's license division to begin administering certain examinations in languages other than English. And HB 230, this bill amends provisions related to enrollment of refugee and immigrant students in public schools. Now we have a very unique opportunity to hear from, from our, our friend, one of our, our new arrivals, Ahmad Nawid Shirzad, a recent arrival to Utah from Afghanistan about his experience. Ahmad, the microphone is yours. Salam ba ma huzdar girami. Man Ahmad Nawid Shirzad astam wajak. تحیه کننده برنامه های تفریح و اجتماعی رادیو تلویزیون خورشید در افغانستان بودم قبل از اینکه حکومت را طالبان اشغال کنند تیم کاری ما برای تهیه یک مستند به یکی از ولایت شمال کابل سفر کردیم عین سبت برنامه بودیم که خبر رسید که ولایت بغلان و گروه تروریستی طالبان تصرف کردند ما هم تصمیم گرفتیم تا ساعت را ترک کنیم در جریان را با کمین طالبان روبرو شدیم که من و همکارانم شدیدا زخمی گردیدیم و یکی از محافظین ما جان باخت با کمک مردم و محل زخمی ها و شفاخانه انتقال داده شد و آنجا دوباره به کابل چون دست راست هم در چهار محل, محل مختلف کسر کرده بود لذا عملیات صورت گرفت که من بیشتر از هفت ساعت بیوش بودم تاریخ ده اگز بود و من هنوز هم در شفاخانه بودم و ولایت را آیست آیست طالبان تصرف میکردن شام پانزه اگز بود که من به طور کام شام پانزه اگز بود که به طور کامل افغانستان را طالبان تصرف کرده بودند ساعت هفت شب بود که رئیس اداری رادیو تلویزیون با من تماس گرفت و از من خواست تا هرچی حاجل خود را به میدان هوایی برسانم سرانجام به میدان هوایی رسیدم و ساعت ده شب توسط یک تیاره نظامی آمریکایی راهی قطر شدیم بعد از سپری نمودن 25 روز در قطر و تاریخ 9 سپتامبر به ایالات متحده آمریکا آمدیم و در یکی از کام های نظامی به نام فورت اکس جابجا شدیم جایی که با تمام ماجرین برخورد نیک صورت می گرفت تاریخ 22 دسامبر با ایالات زیبای یوتا آمدیم همه 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 کمک های لازم را دریافت نمودم از قبیل جای بود و باش لباس خدمات سایی و پول برای غذا که می خواهم از حکومت ایالات متحده امریکا و بخصوص ایالات یوتا سپاسگزاری نمایم خود را خیلی محفوظ احساس کردم و یوتا را سمبول انسانیت دموکراسی و آزادی به تمام معنی پیدا کردم از توجه دان تشکر Hello everyone, I'm Ahmad Nawid Shirzad, a producer of entertainment and social programs for Khorshid Radio and TV Network in Afghanistan. Right before the government was taken over by the Taliban, together with my producer team, I traveled to one of the provinces north of Kab capital city Kabul to make a documentary. While we were recording the program, we were informed that the Taliban terrorist group took over the province, so we decided to leave. On our way back to Kabul, we were ambushed by the Taliban, and I and my teammates sustained severe injuries, and one of our security personnel lost his life. With the help of local people, we were all carried to hospitals, and from there back to Kabul, where I was hospitalized and received surgery on my right arm, since it had fractured at four different locations, and I was unconscious for over seven hours. It was 10th of August. I was still in the hospital. Provinces were falling to the Taliban, one after another. It was evening of August 15 that the whole country was captured by the Taliban. The same evening at 7 o'clock, 
I received a call from our director asking me to get to the airport as quick as possible. I likely, get, I likely could get to the airport by 10 o'clock of that night where I boarded a U.S. military airplane and flew to Qatar. After spending 25 days in Qatar, September 9th, I arrived to the United States of America along with other Afghans and was placed in the Fort Dix military base, a place where we were warmly welcomed and provided us with supplies and items we needed. December 22nd, I came to the beautiful state of Utah, where I received accommodation, clothes, medical services, and money for foods. I would like to thank the government of the United States of America and of the state of Utah in particular. I felt very safe here, and I found Utah a symbol of humanity, democracy, and freedom by all means. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're happy to take any questions that our, our media friends may have. And we have an interpreter here as well if you, uh, if you want to ask any questions. Governor, let me ask, um, at the beginning of this process, did you expect that it would move this rapidly and smoothly? Um, obviously, that's the plan always, but the fact that it's gone so well, is that something you're proud of? Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely something I'm proud of. I, I, would, uh, I would be lying if I said I didn't lose any sleep um, because I did lose some sleep over this one. It was a, it was a very big number, and uh, I, I have all the faith in the world in, in our resettlement agencies as well as our, our team at, at the government level who are working with, with those resettlement agencies. But, but even they knew this was an enormous task. And uh, our, our hope was, and, and again, this was, this was more than hope, our, we, we knew that that the people of Utah would step up. It was, it was more, could we coordinate with the federal government in making all of this happen in such a short period of time? And, uh, and so I am very proud of, of the people who did all of the work. I'm not taking any of the credit. Uh, they, they have just been incredible in, in finding this, ways to make this happen. Um, the housing piece was probably the piece that concerned me the most and, and is still concerning just because we have a housing shortage anyway, not just in, in, in our state, but across the United States. Um, and so making sure that we're able to find permanent housing for uh, for these re, uh, for these refugees w remains a, a very high priority. We're still some short, and that's where where we could still use a little help. Thank you. Other questions? All right. See, yes. Yeah, so there, there's, it's, it's wide open, and that's where we will work very closely with, with our refugees. Um, I think it's important to note that they, they all come with, many of them are very highly educated. Um, they have, uh, they, they worked in careers. Um, they, we, we, we just met somebody who, who worked in, in uh, the, the entertainment industry, um, uh, understands that, that industry. And so we'll be, we'll be helping and, and making it very personal, as personal as we can. And, and uh, we're, we're reaching out to the, the private sector as well. Um, we know where we have shortages. We know where we have job openings. Um, and so trying to match the skill that they have with what the, the job opportunities that they want, and then how do we bridge that gap I with, with training. Um, and, and we have resources available. The, the uh, Department of Workforce Services will be working very closely with the resettlement agencies. And, uh, and then this, this fund that, um, again, Utahns have been so generous to donate to, um, we can we can we can use portions of that for training as well, and uh, and so there 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 are limitless opportunities right now. Every single industry in Utah has shortages, um, so we'll we'll try to find a way to match them up as closely as we can. Let me ask: uh, yeah. when it comes to the partnership between private workforces and private organizations, and then the state, um, how has that worked through this process? It sounds like they really work hand in hand to make sure that this is the best possible. Yeah, they have. K Casey, do you want to, you or Asha, either one of you want to come, Asha, come, come talk a little bit about how that's all working. She's the real expert. We'll, we'll let her talk. So I think what makes us good in Utah is that we have this great collaboration with the government, with the um, resettlement agencies, and also with organizations like the Utah Muslim Civic League in coordinating all of the needs for this population. And 
this effort was unprecedented in the pace and rate of arrivals that really made it challenging for all of us. Um, but because we were able to, to work together to really bring resources to the table from the private and the public sector, we are able to make this work more smoothly than any of us anticipated. Any more questions for Austin? Uh, all right, then, as we, uh, as we wrap up, um, I, I again want to thank all of our partners. Um, and, and as we move into phase two, these, uh, the, the private sector partners will become even more important. We've, we've had some conversations with Silicon Slopes and, and others that are they're interested in, in getting involved and, and we'll make those connections happen. Um, I, I just want to reemphasize one more thing, two more things. Um, again, I want to thank Representative Carol Spackman Moss for, for her leadership in, in running that bill and, and moving things forward. Um, the second is uh, I, I want to thank those who have helped with housing. Um, I, specifically, I, I, I want to thank the Apartment Association, Paul Smith, um, and, and others who have been so generous in, in, in calling their members to, uh, to, to help make those accommodations. And uh, that, that we're still 50 units short, and, and that's where we could desperately use some help. So with that, again, I want to thank everyone for coming, especially our, our special uh, invitees today. We hope you enjoy your day here on Capitol Hill, and uh, we wish you all the success in the world. Thank you.